Hello my friends at home, this is Gabriela Stardust reporting here from New Braunfels, Texas which is 35 miles away from San Antonio and one hour away from Austin, Texas. The reason why I come here today and like to talk to you is like you can see I'm still here, you know, in my house, in the comfort of my house, I must say. Um, we are on a voluntary lockdown, let me say almost uh, three weeks by now. And um, it feels like being in jail. Yeah, maybe, you know, a nice comfy jail, but that's how it feels. But it is not that I will tell you how I feel, you know, being here in my home and uh, not able to go anywhere. Um, it is the reason, it's another reason actually, you know, why I'm here on my channel again, because I would like to give you some updates to some very, you know, uh, critical and good information I have received from some of my friends around the world. So, and I will start right now, you know, with an update to our hospitals. Um, I think I told you already that we are, you know, my family and I, that we are in the medical field and that I'm a geriatric nurse. This is a nurse actually for elderly people. I'm not uh, um, working in this field anymore because, you know, I'm taking care of, you know, some of my family members here in my home. So therefore I'm not able, you know, to go out and work outside. But um, my children are doing, you know, the same. They're not geriatric nurse, but they are, you know, a head nurse in hospitals. And one of them is my son. And I will give you some updates about the hospitals and the situation over there. My, my son is actually in Florida. He is um, located in Panama City Beach area where he is a head nurse in his hospital and he is, you know, the last couple of two weeks, he is many times of layoff and people would think, you know, why you are on layoff, you know, you're a nurse, you know, people need you. But my son told me that actually the hospital is almost empty. Yes, you hear right, the hospital is almost empty. They still have some patients there, very critical patients, you know, some on the ICU, but uh, no uh, surgeries or any things like that are in plan. Um, they thought there might be, you know, we'll have some more patients in the next couple of days and weeks, you know, when the uh, critical a point of this coronavirus might be, you know, have arised. But um, he also has some concern because he said um, people are getting scared, getting scared actually to go to the hospital because they think when they're going to the hospital, they might be not able, you know, to come back out. Um, and this is something what we have heard, you know, over the news it was reported everywhere on YouTube and Facebook, you know, and in our media news, social media news, that people from China actually have reported there was dragging out of their homes. They was very scared to be brought into, you know, hospitals because they thought, you know, the most of them, they never came back out alive. Um, we hope um, that that will be not the case here. And um, I, I even don't want to think about that, you know, when you think, you know, you need to go to the hospital because you need help, any kind of help because you're a sick person. And, you know, they have to tell the people with mild symptoms or medium symptoms, you know, sorry, we cannot keep you. You have to go home. Uh, the hospital is just, you know, for people who are, you know, with very uh, uh, much uh, dangerous you know health conditions so what we do what we think about those people you know they will be sent home you know those places they are kept open right now for these uh, more important and emergency situation 
what are how are these nurses feel to let those patients go and tell them you have to go and lock yourself in and be on self quarantine what is if this person go home and the next day the symptoms are not mild anymore but they're not able you know to go back to the hospital because they're scared you know that they'll be sent away again or maybe that they'll be you know separated from their families like we have seen and heard as well on our social media it is devastating and people start getting scared and I believe that is the reason why some of these hospitals are not full that the most of these stations at this point in our area here where you know where you know my son is reporting from from Florida are not overloaded um, on patients because they are very scared and I do not blame them but um, my son told me also that they are um, thinking that this is just right now you know the moment or the quiet before the storm how you want to call it um, yeah we see we see already other areas and we have seen other reports you know from Californian uh, all the way down you know from up to Washington State and, and down you know to Los Angeles and San Diego that these cases are there you know a little bit different and uh, as well as you know uh, Louisiana New Orleans and other areas already on the Gulf Coast and to say with the East Coast where New York Maryland New Jersey and other places are you know so overloaded and and the hospitals are crowded that those uh, medical staff there are already uh, way uh, understaffed and um, very um, how can I what kind of words I can use to put it um, there are uh, surgical uh, uh, very um, devastated everything what they see what they have tell you know to 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 uh, people they're coming and, and searching for help but they actually cannot give them any help they have to send the most of those people back home too and they just you know keep a uh, uh, critical you know critical cases and um, some of these people there were sent home they actually have died in their home uh, which I think you know is um, terrible okay don't let us talk the whole time here about the coronavirus um, which is which is actually very sad and um, let me go to another topic um, the other topic of what I also um, have heard and I would like to report on it here have something to do with our military uh, we have some more uh, military staff you know employed also people they are on reserve and as well people who are not in the military anymore they're already out of the military for a couple of years and even longer but uh, the government uh, is in search of people who can actually perform uh, certain tests and uh, there would be um, how can I say that um, there would be for um, there would be a need uh, I, they would actually you know be asked to make some or they are able to uh, 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 test some perform some some tests that are needed at this time I hope I put it in the right words I hope I can explain what I actually was going to say the other thing is um, to make it not that long I don't know if every one of you have heard it yet but uh, we have another asteroid coming in and this asteroid is coming in between the 28th and the 29th of April uh, this is the latest word my information where I have my information from and uh, what I can tell you right now this asteroid actually was uh, seen 
already uh, um, for a while uh, from NASA and other astronomers and they actually thought that this um, asteroid will pass Earth and Earth's atmosphere much more farther out uh, than it actually it looks like right now because the asteroid has changed his um, his orbit, his uh, 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 um, actually um, position where he was seen first and it seems like you know he is coming much more closer to our earth and our atmosphere like they actually expected so you know another has some kind of headaches about that but not only about this asteroid you know uh, 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 from uh, end of this month or end of april we're still in march sorry end of april but there is another uh, rumor going around and it comes from a whistleblower and an insider who actually is a friend of a uh, good reporter uh, who was uh, a reporter for the Pentagon and um, he was all around the world and he met a lot of people so um, one of his friends actually is um, uh, Pentagon related as well and also uh, involved in other researchers and um, he told uh, 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 the reporter, this man, that uh, within a couple of months, and they think it will be um, all the way up in the early months of the summer, all the way up to the later months of summer. That means, you know, around end of August, maybe beginning of September. Uh, he was not that clear about those data that a meteor swarm is actually hidden in our way or towards Earth. And he was very, very, very concerned uh, when I was told uh, what ha will happen um, of this insider um, news. He said um, it will hit uh, not only many, many, many places in Europe and um, in, uh, I think it was uh, North, South Russia, um, North China, um, and it will also hit uh, some area in Australia, some South, not South Africa, more North Africa and um, a lot of areas here in the United States. Uh, he said by 80% will go on land and uh, is predicted to go on land. 20% they do not know where it will hit, where it will go, if it goes into the oceans or you know if it hit some other areas, but it will be very devastating. Their plans are, you know, the government plan is right now not to um, tell the uh, public, um, which is us, um, about this event um, too early. He said, if we are lucky, we might be can hear it a week or two weeks before the asteroids or meteoroids are coming in but not weeks or months before because uh, for sure you can imagine what the answer was about that they tried to avoid um, a mass history and uh, for sure people would go hysterical you know if they would uh, know about that um, I don't know if everybody still would go to work if they would know in a couple of months, you know, we have an Armageddon coming in. And um, I don't know why why they're not. I mean, yes, and one, on one hand, I do understand, you know, they're concerned. But on the other hand, I think, you know, it is um, our, our rights to know what happened, you know, and what might become our way so that we can prepare or spend some time with our loved ones and see you know how how we copy with those 
you know, uh, uh, news and, 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 and reports. Yeah, that's um, all so far from here. What I have on news for you guys, I think, I think it was a lot of, I hope, you know, I, I, I brought it over uh, for all of you to understand what I was going to say. I like to be the messenger of bad news, but I thought, you know, it is time to go back online, go back to my channel and let you guys know what actually happened and what will happen in our near future. I hope, you know, we can prevent all this. I hope, you know, we get rid of this virus, which is really real and, and, and exists. It is not a hoax. It is a bioweapon. And this is the only explanation why every country around the globe, around our Earth, have prepared, have these shutdowns, have those restrictions, um, putting people on lockdown. This is real. It is not a hoax. Um, it might, is not that dangerous, let me say, um, then we be told it is. Maybe it is just, you know, a, a, a flu-like infection, but um, it kills pretty fast. If you have it and you have pre-existing condition and, you know, you are very vulnerable, I mean, and I see, you know, it is not only infecting, you know, elderly people with a very weak immune system and pre-existing condition. It also affects, you know, much younger people and as well people who are in pretty good health. So that's, that's the scary part. So we cannot be safe on the safe side. Nobody can be on the safe side. We just have to make sure, you know, we try to prevent socializing and we try to prevent uh, our family and ourselves uh, um, going uh, at places with big crowds if we don't have to. You know, wearing a mask, if you have a mask, is pretty a very good uh, um, advice. Also, you know, some, some sunglasses or, or other glasses and uh, have the layer of, um, of a filter in those, in those masks. I hope you all, you know, were smart enough to uh, buy some of those uh, N95 masks and uh, also uh, um, extra filters for that so that you are, you know, uh, um, able to protect yourself, you know, and your families. So that's all from here right now. Um, you all stay safe, my friends. I hope I will be back soon with some other, you know, news and hopefully some better news. And uh, I hope we all will make it as good as we can. Uh, try to stay in your home, even if it doesn't, you know, make any sense. Even if it goes against your, your rights. We all have those rights. But if we do not obey, you know, uh, 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 and if we do not make common sense uh, to prevent a further more outbreak, because, you know, we are going outside, we are socializing, we're driving around, you know, we, we think it is funny, we think it cannot affect us. Don't think even like that, because it's the wrong way to think. So I love you all. I hope I see you soon. Stay safe. Um, watch the self when you're there. I don't have to say that anymore right now because you are mostly, I believe, in your house and not, you know, that much out anymore. At least for those, you know, who are on those lockdowns right now and involuntary uh, um, house arrest. But um, you all stay safe. I love you and hope to see you next time, next day. Or next days to another day another time bye bye for now